Hi, I'm Mike Mahan with SMA America Solar Academy. Today we're going to talk about SMA's cluster controller. The cluster controller is a monitoring, data logging, and plant control device for use with more than four inverters and can control up to 75 WebConnect enabled inverters. To begin, the cluster controller needs to be installed securely on DIN rail in an enclosure that provides at least four inches of clearance above and below the cluster controller and three eighths inch clearance from the front. The device is powered by a 24 volt DC power supply that is not included with the cluster controller. For best practice, we're also including a power supply breaker. The wires from the power supply are connected to the cluster controller with this three pin plug that is included with the cluster controller. Now that we've mounted the cluster controller on the DIN rail and attached the equipment ground, we're ready to connect the power supply with the included three pin plug. Now that we've attached the power connector to the cluster controller, we're ready to make the other connection. Along the bottom of the cluster controller are six network ports. Two are for our speed wire connected inverters. So I'll actually plug in that. Two are reserved for future development and two are for external networks. That could be a plant control network or the open internet. There are also many ports for sensor connections. We have analog output, temperature sensors like thermocouples, analog inputs, two sets for digital inputs. These are reserved for future development and digital outputs. Lastly, we have two USB ports. The one to the left is for data storage and the one to the right is for firmware upgrades. For the various sensor types, please consult section 6 of the manual for the specifications on what type of instruments and cabling are required. Now we're ready to power up the cluster controller, so I'll turn on the breaker. You see the screen come to life. It's important to note that the buttons next to the display are only for cycling through the displays. There's no way to actually enter or change a value from in front of the cluster controller. That will be through the user interface. Once the cluster controller has fully booted up, the power LED should be green and now you can cycle through the display screens, of which there are 14. The one that's of most importance is titled External Communications, and it will show the IP address that has been assigned to the cluster controller. You'll need this for accessing the user interface. To really unlock the potential of the cluster controller and to make any parameter changes, we need to access the user interface. So let's do that now. Open an internet browser on a computer that's on the same local area network as the cluster controller. And here's where we need that IP address that we got from the front screen. I'm simply gonna type that in to the address bar, hit enter, and we have the login screen for the cluster controller. We've changed the default password, but the program still thinks our password is not secure, and it has helpfully taken us to the settings tab where we can change the password. If you click on the inverters connected to the cluster controller in the plant tree, you'll see that the user interface looks very much like Sunny Explorer. If overview, spot values, settings tab, and events. Under the spot values, if for example we look at the DC side, we can see the current and the voltage on input channel A. We don't have anything connected to input channel B presently. This would be exactly what you would see if you had a tri-power connected to the cluster controller. We have a 5000 watt TLUS connected to it. One thing you will need to do is turn off the WebConnect function in the individual inverters. To do that, click on the plant in the plant tree the settings tab, go down to external communication, and the first submenu will be web connect. Click edit to enable, choose no, and click save. And this will disable the web connect functionality so the inverters will not try to talk to the Sunny Portal. The cluster controller will do that. To register the plant in Sunny Portal, you click on the cluster controller tab and go down to Sunny Portal under the settings. Click edit and then enter the email address you want associated with the plant, and if you want to change or give a descriptive plant name, enter that. Click Save once you've entered that information, and then click Execute to actually register the plant with the Sunny Portal. Sunny Portal will get this information and send back a password for the plant to the email address that you have entered in the User Settings tab. We always recommend that you have a generic email address that you use to register all your plants with the Sunny Portal, such as sunnyportal at mycompany.com, so that it's not associated with any individual person. That's it for this tech tip. If you'd like to learn more about the cluster controller, please visit our website, sma-america.com, and under the Products tab, choose Monitoring. For SMA Solar Academy, I'm Mike Mahan. Thanks for joining us.